It's Bang Dream's sixth anniversary, the kettle is done, it's Morphonica's debut album, and the song Wing Beat actually came out a few weeks ago, but I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to talk about it, because this song, there's a lot to break down with this one. First time hearing this band, and let's just get into it. Hi there, and welcome back to Japan, and yes, I'm going to need the coffee for this one. Although this music pretty much is the musical equivalent of coffee, yes, this is my first time reviewing a Morphonica song. And even though we have been following um, Bang Dream as a general and following artists who are perhaps more famous like Reza Selen and Rosalia, this is something that I would wanted to get around to ever since we actually heard, I believe it was the violinist from Morphonica, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she was the person who was appearing on the uh, first Lonesome Blue track that I heard. And I remember saying at the time, before I knew that she was guest appearing on that song, that basically she was the best thing about it. It was a great song, but I really loved her contribution. And then when I heard that she was a part of this band and this band itself was part of Bang Dream, I thought, yes, I absolutely need to be checking this out. Now, I've been on the train recently here in Japan and there have been loads and loads of advertising boards up for the Bang Dream sixth anniversary, but also for the Morphonica debut. And therefore I knew Wing Beat came out. I knew it had been suggested to me and it was time to get into it. So. Let's start, first of all, by breaking down what this song is. See, as much as I've got to say about this song, we always start with the song arrangement on this channel. And the arrangement of this song is, in some ways, traditionally your contemporary pop or rock song. You know, you've got your verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus kind of arrangement going on here. But what I really like about this is it doesn't just feel like a pop rock song. In fact, it does have something of a more classical vibe to it. Now, I was reminded slightly of bands like Wagaki Band, who obviously they, they use their um, traditional Japanese instruments in their band arrangement to give their sound something of a more traditional Japanese sound, despite the fact that a lot of the songs they play are either covers of Vocaloid songs or, you know, some more contemporary styles of music. Now, with a lot of the band dream artists, they have keyboard players in there, so as a result, again, I, I love any band who has like a, an X Factor instrumentalist in there, and a keyboard player is a great one because a keyboard player can play any sound they want. But, you know, those sorts of um, keyboard players, those sorts of uh, arrangements in the Bang Dream bands tend to give them more interesting and diverse sounds, but here having a violinist, they really rally around and go for a sound that works with the violin. We have sort of big dramatic um, feelings in the chorus, it's not just a happy-go-lucky sort of chorus, it really feels very dramatic, as you've got this descending chord line underneath that goes down and down, everything feels very dramatic, sorry I know that I can't hit the pitches very well. That's why I'm not in Morphonica. Um, but, you know, everything about the arrangement, it's got that descending chord pattern, like I say, it's got that feeling that everything is not set up to resolve on a happy, positive major note every step of the way. And for me, that's so impressive because it's part of what makes this band so interesting straight off the bat, which is the feeling that there is a real juxtaposition here. I've said so many times with the greatest bands, or at least the bands most likely to break out, a juxtaposition is really important. Something that basically makes your image and your music interestingly either different or complementary in a way that no one would expect. I mean, I often reference things like Babe Metal are the most obvious example as the big breakout from Japan, you know, sort of the J-pop girls group thing going alongside the metal sound. And yeah, I've made these references before. But what's really interesting here is that their whole look the look that, um, that Morphonica have uh, in their sort of persona as musicians, and I believe is carried across in their animated form as well, is a sort of a slightly cutesy made look, which again is in line with the Bang Dream sound. And yet when you actually, sorry, the Bang Dream image, and yet when you hear their music, again, it's that feeling that it is not... Uh, it's not music that is deliberately happy and just sort of joy, joy, joy. There's an intense emotionality where if you took away the image and you just listened to the song, it would feel quite deeply impactful. Like, wow, this is this is really quite passionate, emotional, probably personal sounding stuff. So it's very interesting when you've got something like um, Bang Dream, which let's be honest, it is a, a, a sort of a, a machine of uh, musical creation. You know, they're producing these artists, producing these songs. It's really nice when you get something that comes out sounding this passionate. And a lot of it is based on the use of the violin. I liked how the violin was accenting certain little notes here and there, and it was just popping in the right places. I, I can't help but feel the violinist here 
she's very good i mean we often say the best musicians they know when not to play and when to play rather than just playing all the time uh and yeah she really gave that vibe popping in at just the right points like, like accenting the right notes where you just go mm, perfect you know just like a chord change comes in there's a little bit of violin you're like oh that's oh, just right just in the right place just to sort of push a note or push the particular feeling of a particular chord change yeah this is what i mean this is something where there's a lot of feeling and a lot of passion in this Another place where we saw that was, or heard it, I should say, is actually something I alluded to slightly earlier, was with the vocals. Now, this is something I'd mentioned with uh, Rosalia previously, but I think it's worth pointing out here, is that, again, with the better Bang Dream artists, I mean, you have bands like Razor Swillen, where you've got a very strong lead singer, but with the better Bang Dream artists, it's their ability to not only rely on having good musicians, not also to rely on having a keyboardist or an X Factor musician in there to give the sound a bit of uh, extra identity, but also having a range of vocalists, you know, having not just the lead singer sing, but all the other members able to provide backing vocals. And again, this song benefits from that. I mean, yes, it is still a contemporary band, but they're almost playing that choral trick that you'd expect with a choir with the sort of call and answer where the lead singer sings in the chorus da -da, da -da, da, and then you get the backing vocals la, 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 la. I'm, I'm trying not to not that my singing is that good trying not to sing enough to get me copyright struck here um <laughs> No one's going to strike me for my performances um but yeah it's it's a feeling that there is a sort of semi choir like persona behind that and so this goes back to what i was saying before that uh, wagaki band comparison in that i feel like this band this whole sound that morphonica are going for is in a sort of a nice gentle not too on the nose way kind of referencing a, a sort of classical music vibe and although i know that they're going to have a lot of their songs are going to be written and uh, sort of put together by the fantastic team of people who work with mang dream i can't help but wonder whether um there is that extra layer of experience here. I mean, having such a fantastically talented violinist, I mean, I keep on referencing her, but it could be any member of the band. Um, just the ability to have these songs so well crafted with just a sort of weird love for classical music sort of pumping through the veins of it. I, I, I really enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to hearing more of it just to see how or if that is their signature thing, only one song in, I can't help but feel, is this a band who marries sort of classical with a kind of J-pop rock feel? That, that's something I can't think of any other band who are doing that. So in conclusion, I know this has been something of a rambling review because this is my first ever time hearing um, Morphonica and there's a lot for me to really digest here, but I do feel this is a group who, again, I guess it would be easier to judge this song after hearing more of their songs and uh, really knowing whether this is, uh, uh, indicative of what they usually do but just taking it on its own merit it's fantastically catchy i mean really gets stuck in your head it's got a musical quality that makes it both accessible in the way that bang dream songs are makes it something that is easy for you to get into and enjoy like it were a contemporary pop song and yet at the same time manages to shirk a lot of the things that would perhaps be the downsides of a contemporary pop song like being repetitive in a kind of a overly oh every single chord pattern resolves kind Kind of way and this is one of the things i love about japanese music as a general is that they tend to you know the chord patterns tend to passage you know songs tend to go from a beginning to an end with a full progression rather than just repeat catchy chorus repeat catchy chorus but morphonica seem to be taking that even more and developing even more upon that and so I would really look forward to knowing that. Now, of course, their uh, their debut album is out and it's called Quintet, which makes even more sense now because using a classical term, I, I'm really excited about this band because I get the feeling this is, we, we already, you know, basically, <laughs> what is Bang Dream? Bang Dream is J-pop meets J-rock and then also with the animation side, but just looking purely on music, J-pop, J-rock, but J-pop, J-rock classic? I, I need this. I need more of this in my life. So I'm going to be checking out more. As always, if you're a fan of Morphonicas, get into the comments and tell me what to listen to next. I certainly will be uh, trying to check out the full album as well. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. And until I hopefully see you very soon in Japan for the next one of these, for now at least, ciao, ciao.